Welcome. It's me, Aaron the Artist. I want to talk a little bit about what I'm going to be calling hustle culture and how that affects all of us as artists. What I mean by the words hustle culture is just this idea that we should all be working absurdly long hours on professional careers or goals with very little or ideally no time spent doing anything else, including spending time with friends and family, watching TV, playing games, pursuing other fun hobbies, or even just resting. Hustle culture is the idea that all of your time should be spent doing something productive. Productive in the sense that it gets you further in your career, or makes you more money, or something of that sort. What you definitely shouldn't be doing, according to this mindset, is wasting time doing things that you might think of as just for fun. I saw a video very recently by Duchess Celestia, who made me really think about how much this issue has affected me personally. Duchess Celestia has a great art channel, by the way. If you're interested in art on YouTube, I definitely recommend that you follow her. But anyway, she talks about how she lives and breathes hustle culture, spends almost all of her time working in various art-related jobs at the cost of her personal life and at the cost of her self-care. I was listening to her talk about that, and it really hit me because it was almost like I was listening to a description of myself. For many years now, I've done that. I've obsessively spent every spare moment I have trying to further my art career, and I've quite often chosen my work over something else that's important to me. When I say that, I mean that in a very extreme way. I can count on one hand the number of times I've seen my family over the last few years. I can't remember the last time I saw my close friends. I've missed countless TV shows that I was really excited about. One of my biggest inspirations for becoming an artist in the first place was video games, and the only game that I can even remember playing is Octopath Traveler, the first one, and that came out years ago. None of that is to even mention the time that I give myself for rest or self-care, which is essentially nothing. I regularly function on five hours sleep, I miss meals, I don't keep track of my diet. In short, I don't really stop to take any time to take a breath. I just keep creating art, day in, day out, because in my head, any amount of time spent not working is time wasted time falling behind, and time not succeeding. I don't want any of that to come across as whining, since those are all choices that I've made, because I thought that my art career needed 100% of my attention all the time. So, I can really relate to what Celestia is saying in her video about how easy it is to be swept up in hustle culture, especially because, as she rightly points out, it does work. If you're willing to do those things to yourself, you can succeed as an artist. I've made massive improvements to the quality of my art since I started doing that. I've had at least a handful of commissions to work on every month for a couple of years. I started this YouTube channel. I started a TikTok channel. So, it definitely works. The only question is whether you personally think that success in your career as an artist is worth sacrificing basically everything else in your life. Now, Celestia does a great job of highlighting how completely draining hustle culture can be for artists. I'd highly recommend anybody considering a career as an artist, especially an independent or freelance artist, watch that video. In this video, I want to think a bit about why artists fall into the trap of hustle culture in the first place. I sort of fell into the trap without realizing I'd even done it. I started pursuing an art career and before I knew it, here I was, working myself to the brink of exhaustion, and I had never reflected even for a second on why I was doing that. If my experience is anything to go by, I don't think many of us ever consciously make the choice to do hustle culture. You can just sort of thoughtlessly end up embracing it and all of its harms, without even knowing that that's what you've done. So, how on earth did all of that happened to me without me stopping to see just how bad it was for me. How did I end up 
focusing on my artwork and abandoning everything else in my life. I think it's pretty easy to do, actually. There are three things that really push artists that way. One of them Celestia already mentioned, the worry that everybody else is hustling. If other people are putting in the long hours and you're not, well, that means that they're succeeding in the market and they're taking your business while you fall behind. So the threat is that if you want to keep up, you need to work all the time because that's what everyone else is doing. There are two other reasons as well though, so let's get to that. One of them is the idea that you should have multiple streams of income. It's common for art influencers. You know, I really don't like the word art influencer, but I'll use it anyway. It's common for those people to say that we ought to try and have multiple streams of income as artists. We shouldn't just rely, for example, on selling prints. We should try to have three or four other ways of making money with our art on top of prints so that when our prints do badly, we can rely on the other streams. And so the influencers tell you, it's even better if those streams can be, air quotes, passive income, because then you don't even have to work to make the money. As a young artist, I remember thinking that all that sounds fantastic. It makes being an artist sound super profitable and stable, since you could have multiple good ways of making money with your art. And that way, I used to think, it doesn't matter if my YouTube channel never gets to 2 million subscribers. It won't matter because I'll have my print shop, and I'll have my commissions, and I'll have my TikTok, and all of them will pool together to make all the money that I need. But here's the reality of that situation. Never underestimate the amount of work any of those things takes. And the more streams of incomes you want, the more work that you have to do. I currently do three different things. I take commissions, I run this YouTube channel, and I run a TikTok account. As I'm sure a lot of you will know, to make money with commissions, you have to create the marketing materials for the commissions, create the commission sheets, write the terms and conditions, make all those kind of documents. You have to actively market your commissions on social media, run paid advertising for commissions, talk to clients every day, actually create the commissions, and keep track of all your profits. To run a YouTube channel, I have to create a script, I have to create at least one piece of finished artwork each week, record that entire process, record the script, edit the video footage, edit the audio, put it all together, create the thumbnail, upload the video, and then market the video on social media. If the channel was more successful, I'd have even more work to do. I might do things like talk to sponsors and negotiate deals and create advertisements for them. To run TikTok, I have to do all those same things again, but in that weird vertical video format. Now, I'm not just mentioning that stuff to say, look how much work I do. What I'm trying to say is each of those things is by itself a part-time job in terms of the amount of time you need to put in to make them work. A lot of the most successful artists do even more than that. They do all those things, and they sell original prints, they manage a Patreon, they create video game assets, art books, any combination of those things. The more of these things you take on, the more stable your income is, so you can definitely see why people really want to have multiple streams of income like that. The problem is, each of them takes a massive amount of work, and despite the myth that people keep telling you, Almost none of that is really passive income. All of it requires you to do at least some work every day to make it successful. So that's at least one reason why I think hustle culture has such a grip on artists. There's this real pressure to have multiple streams of income so that you can be a successful artist. And having multiple streams of income naturally comes with an absolutely extortionate amount of work. The second reason is somewhat related to that. and. It has to do with the absurd demands of modern social media platforms. A lot of us artists have been sold on a dream. The dream of being able to create art full time from home with hundreds of thousands of fans who love your work and support you and give you money to make more of that art that you love making. When you look online, that's definitely a dream that seems possible. I remember when I very first got on Instagram 
and I saw people like Sam Desarts, and I thought, boy, I really could be a successful artist. I really could do that. The fact is, there's a very small number of folks who make being a social media artist work as a career. Those people are people like Sam Desarts and Lavender Town. The success of that small handful of people on social media creates the impression that anyone could make it if they put in the work. If you just post enough, if you just create enough art and get in people's eyeballs, you could be like that too. That's what I used to think. That the dream of being paid to create the art that you love while entertaining everybody was sort of right there in front of your fingertips. It's right there sitting on your smartphone. And all you've got to do is put in the hours. I've come to think that that's a lie told by art influencers and by social media companies. Told by art influencers because they want you to watch their videos and told by social media companies because they want you to invest all of your time into their platform. I think the truth is something more like this. Reaching that level of success on very crowded social media sites takes a combination of outrageous amounts of work and even more luck. To really grow an account on any social media platform, it isn't enough that you have high quality work. You have to jump through all of the hoops of the platform. You need to post constantly, numerous times a week. The more that you can post, the better. And ideally you'll be posting about trending topics. You won't just be drawing your OCs. You'll be doing things like drawing Barbie when the Barbie movie comes out, for example. I just did that the other day. You can't just post once a week and then fall off the internet until next week. There is so much art online for people to enjoy that everybody will have forgotten all about your piece from last week, unless you're constantly there pushing new fan art into their faces. But now we face the real problem. You're an artist, and making high quality artwork can take you many hours, maybe even many days. It isn't realistic to think that you'll have a new high quality piece of art ready to post every two or three days. But even though we all know that's the case, a lot of us will try anyway, meaning that we're suddenly spending most of our time getting the next painting ready for Instagram or Twitter. In that circumstance, you really don't have much other choice than to spend every waking moment trying to spit out paintings. Then there's this recent move by social media platforms to prioritize short form video, and that's made things way worse for artists in terms of workload. If you want to do well on social media, you need to make reels or TikToks or shorts or ideally all three. You need to make them and you need to make lots of them. Some people will tell you crazy things like you need to be posting twice a day or five times a week. It isn't clear exactly how many times you need to post, but it's pretty unrealistic either way. When reels first started, it wasn't all that hard to do this. Everybody was sort of just getting into it and the competition was low. So you could get away with posting a simple Procreate time-lapse and you'd get loads of views, loads of subscribers, loads of followers, all that good stuff. But the more time that goes by, the higher quality the reels become. More production value, more attention grabbing, more aesthetic, voiceovers, jump cuts, fancy editing, interesting filming locations. And then there's those fake but epic process videos that you see. All this just escalates until you reach the point where the most successful art accounts are making reels with television production level quality. And I'll tell you, good luck making a reel of that quality twice a day or five times a week and making the art that goes alongside of it. It's pretty easy to see how that's going to eat up all of your time. Honestly, I think a lot of hustle culture is created by these two ideas in the art community the pressure to create multiple streams of income, and the popular idea that being successful as an artist requires being successful on social media. Now, what exactly are we supposed to do about that? Hey, don't look at me. I'm not here to provide any solutions. It's not like I think there's much alternative. If you want to be a full-time artist, you probably do need multiple streams of income. And you probably do need to be successful on social media. I don't think for a second that me just pointing out that these are the reasons for hustle culture is going to mean that everybody just stops working themselves into the ground. 
I'm sure lots of folks will carry on anyway, and that's fine. But I think if I'd been aware of how harmful those two ideas would eventually be to my own life, if I'd actually stopped, you know, towards the beginning of my journey and thought a bit about how this stuff was making me give up everything else that I like in my life, I might have thought twice before I went down that road. So, if this even just gives you a little bit of a warning of what's to come, then it's been worth it. Anyway, that's about all I've got to say about that. So, if you're still here, do all of those things for me, and have a nice day. <laughs>